What's up gamers, you boy the goods, and we are here for episode number two of Narcissu. In the last episode, we discovered that we have been hospitalized and are dying, put into hospice, and in this episode, we are continuing, presumably about to meet Narcissu. <clears throat> there was this kind of, there was this place, kind of like a lounge, at one side of the corridor, across from the nurse's station. This generally deserted place held a few couches and chairs as well as a large TV. Stupid programs commemorating the new year were still being broadcast on that 28-inch screen. And there was a girl who looked absolutely bored watching that absolutely boring TV. Short, in pink pajamas, a white bracelet on her wrist, just like mine. Impressively long hair that almost reached down to her hips. Hey, do you find that interesting? There was no deep purpose in asking. Simply, I had nothing else to do, so I started talking to her. Not really, was her only reply to me. She didn't turn to face me at all. And she kept looking on with boredom at that TV as if I didn't even exist. Then don't watch it. Even as I thought this, I sat down in a chair next to her, and side by side we watched TV. Nothing else to do. Nothing we could do. So we sat there silently and watched TV. New Year celebration programs as per usual, a useless array of comedians and oddities. And every so often, the MC's stupid shrill laughter resounding dryly in this white, sun-drenched lounge. <clears throat> Say, tell me, the girl suddenly started talking to me, but her eyes were as always glued to the TV screen. How many times is it for you now? What do you mean by that? How many times have you come here to 7F? Sorry, I have no clue what you're talking about. I see, so it's your first time then. So she'd seen my confusion about her question and come to the right conclusion. <clears throat> then since there's no one else around, and since it's my duty... Duty? There's this rule. Nodding slightly, she explained the rule that was... Was that someone here, 7F, should tell newcomers the truth. <clears throat> I knew nothing, I understood even less. And as if I did not even exist, she slow slowly started her speech. Then listened closely. Her words spoken methodically one by one were a little different from all the ones I'd heard from the doctors about this place. In their business-like, crisp syntaxes, they told me, this is a place where one awaits for medical advances. This is a place where one heals one's heart, and perhaps they might have been correct in a general sense. But according to the girl, that was just the party line. The truth was that this 7F was the only place in the hospital where medical treatments did not take place. This was just a place where you waited for your life to come to an end. <clears throat> Those were her words to me. I'd thought so as well. I'd felt, e I'd felt it even before she'd spoken. See, this is my second time. Second time doing what? Coming here. And then she explained to me that nobody on 7F stayed here from initial hospitalization all the way until death. While there was zero possibility of being cured, you were sent home if your condition was stable. But if it worsened again, you would be returned here. That cycle ended only in death. Whether it was at home or here on 7F, always one of the two. You were going to die. No way to escape it, it seemed. And with that meaning permeating her every word, she informed me that this is her second time up here. I'm only going to say this once, so listen closely now. She continued speaking all the while staring at the blank TV screen. This wasn't idle chit-chat about when the lights out was, or where the kitchen was, or anything like that. <clears throat> this was something completely different. The third time you are discharged home, resign yourself. There won't be a fourth time. You will never go home again. If you ever want to escape, head toward the B station, not the A station. Eat nothing. That is the simplest shortcut. You leave the smallest burden on your family that way. It was as if she was packed to the brim with matters like those. This was probably an oral tradition, relevant only to those who were going to die, and kept by those who came here for that purpose. So this is the duty you were talking about? Yes, that's right. So do remember to perform it for a newcomer yourself one day, okay? With those words, she slowly stood up. She casually tossed her long hair and it grazed my nose. I have to go get my temperature measured, so... Then she turned her back, and started walking down the corridor. Now completely deserted save for me, the lounge had held only the laughter from the TV and the white flowers by the windowsill. In the end, she didn't even look at me once.
A few days later, New Year's celebrations were over, and the middle and high school students were beginning a new term. And just as ever, she and I sat in the lounge staring blankly at the TV. This is boring. So it is. So we said. But both of us kept our eyes on the screen. Hey, is this place always this way? I don't understand what you're getting at. I'm getting at how it's always deserted. Older than the nurses, other than the nurses, doctors, and help staff, and other than her, I would not seen a single person. <clears throat> Did everybody go home for the new year or something? Do you really want to know? Uh, well, I didn't mean... Then I won't tell you. We, who disinterestedly tossed back and forth this exchange that could not even be called a conversation. The slight breeze, coming from the window that would not open more than 15 centimeters. From time to time, her hair would sway, as if in agreement the flowers of the windowsill would too. <clears throat> this is how we kill time day after day, staring at that boring good-for-nothing TV. Click, click, click. Oh, here the two of you are, an elderly nurse said as she rushed towards us. For what I'd seen of the nurse's station, she was apparently the charge nurse of 7F. Well, Miss Setsumi, any fever? <clears throat> I'm fine, no fever. Setsumi, so that was her name. You really shouldn't be moving around like this. Do you understand? Everyone's worried about you. Well, whatever. Come now, what kind of answer is that? Oh, children these days. The nurse continued to scold and henpeck for some while longer, and the girl, the girl named Setsumi, pretended not to notice it at all. She simply stared straight forward at that boring TV, paying that fussy nurse as little heed as she could. I'll be coming later to draw some blood, okay? With those words, the charge nurse went back to the nurse's station. Hey, you know... Well, mind if I call you Setsumi? I asked this as she stared at her white vinyl ID bracelet, and at the blood type and the name written therein. Is something the matter, Setsumi? Why are you calling me that? Huh? You're younger than me. Hey, why am I younger than you? <laughs> Nothing, that's just what I thought is all. It wasn't that I was offended that she called me younger than her. It was just that no matter how I looked at it, I thought she was five to six older, year, five to six years older than I was. That's why I took out my driver's license from my breast pocket and handed it directly to her. See, I may not seem it, but I'm twenty. So you're younger after all. She only took a glance at my license before handing it back to me. Um, I don't really get what you're saying. It doesn't really matter. I'm just a little older than you are. That's all. She murmured as expressionlessly as ever. Her eyes were fixed on that boring TV, all right, but it also felt as if she was gazing at something far away. After they'd taken my AM vital signs, I snuck past the nurses and boarded the elevator. When I got to 1F, I walked out the outpatient clinic doors and walked outside of the hospital. My goal was the place that I'd been told about not long ago, the faraway B station, not the A station. Isn't that where we go to die? It wasn't that I wanted to escape or anything, at 7F or at home, and none of us died anywhere else. That's what I'd been told. In this B station, which the girl named Setsumi had apparently been to many times. That's why, at least just once, I wanted to see this place with my own eyes. It's not as if there's going to be a guard on duty. Even so, we were inhabitants of 7F, different than f from other inpatients. And thinking of vague maybe so early in the morning, I headed toward that station. My legs settled into a lazy gait as I glanced sidelong at the people commuting to work or school. <clears throat> After about 25 minutes of this, I arrived in front of the station, roughly four bus stops away I ca when I calculated it out. Wow, there are a lot of people here, was my first impression of a B station. I stood out a bit because I was in pajamas, but I felt that if I could just buy a subway ticket, I'd be able to go anywhere, no question about it. I still had no idea what I'd been told to go to the B station, not the A station but it looked as if it would be easy to escape if I really wanted to. She must have come here many times herself. So why did she remain on 7F right now? The station in the early morning. I stood there thinking these thoughts as I watched the people rapidly passing me by. That night, after lights out, bored of manga and unable to sleep, I wandered through the hospital alone. Certainly, it wasn't supposed to be allowed after lights out, but we of 7F had a peculiar kind of liberty. So, in the presence of no light, in the pitch-black stillness of the lounge, that's where I found her. Hey, have you been looking outside today? Yeah. The darkened interior. She did answer me, but she continued to stare out the window as if she had not. 
I immediately launched into what had happened today. Oh, by the way, I went out to the station today. The B station, just as you taught me. I see. But her response did not change. I thought that she'd react with something because she had been there before, too. But now that I thought about it, did the fact that she was here mean that she had no intention of escaping in the first place? I'm going to be going home soon. What? She opened her mouth abruptly and spoke as if she'd seen right through me. But next time will be the third time, so we may not see each other again. Hmm, yeah, I guess. Probably what she was talking about was a temporarily temporary discharge from the hospital. She told me that nobody was discharged from 7F more than three times. Unlike the elderly, given the progress of our disease, this meant all the more to young people like us. Her we may not see each other again was filled with that kind of meaning. Oh, which one have you decided on? Decided on? Where you're going to die. <clears throat> when that word death came up so abruptly, I was at a total loss for words. I don't know. I haven't thought about it yet. I see. It's just your first time after all. She murmured, looking desolate. Certainly, it wasn't as if I was going to exist here forever. Just like everyone else, I would be admitted and discharged, slowly grow weak, and someday, I would have to choose in the end, here on 7F or at home surrounded by those fake smiles. I don't want to die at home. But I don't want to die here either. Then what will you do? I guess the only thing is to go somewhere while I still have the strength to. Somewhere, you can't be... This girl who was staying here on 7F when she could have escaped any time she wanted. When I thought of that, do you have any other place to go? Do you want to stop me? What? Or do you want to come with me? Well, no, that wasn't what I was thinking about. Then don't ask. She was staring out the window as she spoke. Dispassionate, not looking at me once, the same as ever. But then and just then, her usual expressionless face looked so very sad to me. I was a newcomer to 7F, just recently thought that the third discharge was the last, and she was a girl who was soon to be discharged for the second time. I still did not feel anything real about what was happening to me. Would, would I too come to wear such a face someday? <clears throat> alright right, gang, alright chat, alright everybody. We saved the game, we saved the game, we cut it there, that was a lot. Thank you all for watching, I will see you next time. Bye-bye.